Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Deep Three episode. Today, I have the pleasure of talking to a Hall of Famer, AJ Ross. He's a Hall of Famer at TCU, a pro basketball player for many years, including WNBA. What's up, Adrian? What's up, Vlad? Happy to be here. How are you? Doing good, doing good. You know, just surviving, staying healthy. That's it. All right. That's all we can do. <laughs> all right. So, just a quick backstory. And I met a few years ago. We both uh, signed to play in Cluj. And uh, that was what, like, what, three years ago, I think? Yeah, 2016. So, yeah, closer to right. four. That's it. Yeah. Flying by. And by. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then also, a lot of people probably, many are familiar with Ron, right? Her brother, mm -hmm. uh, just to kill a score overseas. Uh, he's played uh, many, many years. So, basically, basketball family right here. Uh, so, Adrian, how's, uh, how's retirement going? Let's start with that. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it doesn't feel like retirement just yet. Um, Cluj, I played one more season after that. And then after, uh, so since 2018, you know, I've been done and, but I've had a crazy years. I've had a few crazy years uh, since then. So now it's starting to calm down. But now that my life is calming down, we have COVID. So it's a lot, but I'm keeping one foot after the other and learning a lot, appreciating the process. Guys, let's yeah. start backwards a little bit. I know as, 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 just when I mentioned stuff and how much mm -hmm. you love the game and clearly, you know, with your brother being involved in the game. And uh, I know you started training kids as soon as you got done playing, basically. Uh, why? Why train kids? Uh, and if you just seen like how we grew up, how me and my brother grew up, if I didn't have him um, to look up to and just be his shadow, I don't know if I would have played. You know, he was just such a hard worker. For those that do know him, you know, he was in Romania uh, about two or three years before me and he had loved it a lot. He had made his own name, you know, and so so forth. And you could see, if you know him, if you played against him, you could see it, his work ethic, you know. So I saw that at an early age, like seven, eight. But that's all I had was my brother, you know. So we're working out. We're making up things. But as I kept putting my focus into basketball, it kept taking me places. And every time it took me somewhere new, but I would come back home to a small town in New Mexico, there was all these kids and I have all these resources and all this knowledge. And I'm like, OK, I can give it to you because I just want to give these kids something that I didn't have going up. So it didn't start with training. It started with camps. I would have a few months off in the summer. Let's let's uh, have a camp, have a camp where my brother raised some money, give it to a good cause, go back. You know, and that became just a thing of ours. And then uh, 2018, my mom was diagnosed with stage four cancer. I was still under contract, um, actually looking to go back overseas, but it was my 10th season I was uh, that I had just completed. I said, you know what, I'll just go ahead and retire now. You know, what's one more year going to do? I need to be here with my mom. The doctors had only given her two years. So at that time, I'm back home in Hobbs, and it was kind of something to kind of give back. I was going to monetize it and have like 10 to 15 clients, just enough to generate income so I'm not just withdrawing for a year. And next thing you know, a guy was like, that's what you thought. You know, next thing you know, I have like 90 clients. I'm getting a logo. I'm trying to find a business. I had, you know, uh, it was just a lot going on, but it put my attention into somewhere good. So that's how I started training. Like it was doing a lot for the kids. But at the time it was keeping basketball in my life. It was giving me a routine. It was doing a lot for me as well. So now when I do my training, it's always like a two for one deal. I try to implement some mentorship and show how basketball can just be a relief, you know, for not only for those training and I want to be a different kind of trainer, not just to come in. I try to make it make sure they got the most for their buck. You know, like you still got to eat. You still got to eat a lot of work. So I get it. I get it. But the reason that I do it is just more so for the mentorship with the kids, you know, and try to connect with them that way. Because there's just not enough people out there. These kids are so important to me, you know, so that's kind of how I got into it. Absolutely. I mean, I think training is not just, uh, you know, just coming and showing you drills. Uh, mm -hmm. because just like, okay, clearly uh, pros like us, you know, have a little more knowledge. But, uh, you know, you play college basketball and then probably any player that play college basketball, even if you didn't play, you just play high school level, you can still get a lot of knowledge out there. And just I don't know what to do with a player as soon as they walk in the gym just because I have this knowledge. But like you said, you just bring a lot more to the table if you really want to help them out, not just, hey, come inside, come to the gym, and then I'll work you out. And cool, you're going to get better. I mean, I, I don't right. deny it. I mean, there's trainers that do all the crazy stuff, and they still, you know, those players still get better. So um, I don't knock it, but I really love the way you, you want to do things. I think it has to be a full package if you really want to develop, because how many of those kids are really going to end up, you know, maybe playing overseas? Uh -huh. 
uh, you know, playing college. Some of them might not even play college. So, but you can impact their life, uh, you know, not just on the basketball court, you know, through stories, through the struggles, you know, the stress that we just we were just chatting about right before we start recording. Right. How much stress in, in professional basketball and how, you know, life is just different when you're a pro. Right. So now let's rewind. Oh, I, I'm glad you, that you the touched Hall of Famer, on it though. Huh? I see. I want to rewind to be, you being a TCU Hall of Famer. The first time I saw it, I was like, oh, my God. Man, it's still <laughs> setting into me. I tell you, I've, I've moved from New Mexico uh, since I was training and started that company. My mom had ended up transitioning and stuff, and I took some time off and came back. And it wasn't, it went um, seven, let me see, in October, 2018, she was already going through a few months of chemo and stuff. And I was actually going to email TC when I found out that I got inducted. I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And then we go to the doctor and we're like, oh my gosh, this is horrible. And so I was just simultaneously trying to have the best year of my life and the worst year of my life, you know? So right then and there, I started juggling and stuff. And then the chemo started hitting hard. And I was like, my mom's my priority. And I'd emailed TCU, had a draft up and saying, like, can I go into the induction later? Um, she's not going to be able to travel in the seat, you know, and and I can't imagine going up there and accepting something that has her name written all over it, you know, because she was a single parent. We talk about my brother going to, you know, playing in Romania. I also have a, a sister all sandwiched in between like 31, 33, 35, oh, we're older now, like 33, 35, 37. We're all right there, you know. And um, but my sister went on and took in Africa, South Korea, and did all of these things too. And it all stemmed from my mom being like a single parent and we're working our butt off, you know, her butt off so that we could stand on podiums and go across the world and teach and do all these things. So as I said, I was drafting up that email, like, I can't do this. The next week we go to the doctor and they were like, oh, wow, you're, 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 you know, your charts and everything looks really great. You can, you know, you, we can postpone chemo. We can get you down there, this, that, and the other. And I called TCU. I was like, okay, I got to find a dress in a week. And it was ever since then, I didn't even plan on going. It was such a big thing. But then last minute, my mom had the opportunity to go. So I had to scrounge everything up. It was a whirlwind. It was amazing. Um, you know, all just everything that you worked for and you get attention and, and just recognition for it, but not just what you did on the court. They're watching what you've done off the court, how you've developed as a person in your in your community back home. They're watching what you've done for the campus and, you know, to help it develop and how you've represented it. And so when you get an award that's like for off the court stuff, when you're just being you and it encourages you to keep being you, keep but also keep being better and better. So it was cool. And the fact that my mom last minute got to come and see that. And so ever since then, I've kind of like been taking it in slowly, but I'm starting to realize some of the perks from the business aspect. So it's like, so now I'm still learning. I'm still learning. It's, it comes with a lot. Though. You're still transitioning. I feel like, you know, you just play yeah. you basketball your whole life. It's not a, yeah. hey, I'm done. I'm retiring. I'm just stepping in. And it's like, I'll be there. But, uh, I mean, you clearly got it down path. I think you know what you want to do. And then uh, let's talk about the pro side of things. All right. Uh, because we both know uh, it's up and down, you know. Uh, I want to talk about the women's basketball uh, specifically uh, just because I like watching it, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, that's not just, you know, Kobe being, you know, pushing uh, mm-hmm. because he's done a great job lately. And uh, to me, that was the saddest part seeing him go is that that was lately he was pushing women's basketball so hard. And I just loved it because, in my opinion, it's a lot more – Pure, uh, it's just better basketball, if you ask me overall, right? Uh, we're talking entertainment, NBA, and you're talking about basketball. To me, it's two different things. Right. And basketball side, just the woman's side, is it's uh, it's better for me. It's I like right. watching it better than when I go and watch an NBA game. I'm like, cool, I don't expect to take right. much out of it. As far as like basketball-wise, I'm not really going to pay attention to it. Uh, so uh, what were some of your experiences overseas? Uh, because to me, uh, ba- men's basketball has become better at, at a younger age in Europe, right? It used to be the right. U.S., but I feel like the European side develops better players now, uh, where the U.S. is kind of more just like, uh, like I said, entertainment stuff. You know, they kind of like to teach players to just go put on a show, basically, you know, right. just all the individual stuff, where on the women's side, I feel like it's still the U.S. that develops and you know, when they have the huge advantage. Right. And uh, how how do you how did you see that as far as you know 
you coming from TCU, clearly being very successful on the court there. Then, you know, you, you had your stint in the WNBA and then going everywhere from Poland, Romania, Spain, right, uh, Lebanon. How did you uh, see that? Because in my opinion, I feel like it was just kind of like a, the college basketball, like, right, right here, right. like the, the pinnacle in some ways of uh, women's basketball. I mean, you watch the right. U.S. like legends, right? <laughs> so how, how did you see that? Well, first and foremost, I commend you for just recognizing the women's basketball period, even just having me here on the platform to talk about the differences, the contrast and stuff. Um, I think in order for you to talk about it and for us to talk about a period, it's important to be cultured with basketball. You know, you can't just say like, I only like men's basketball. Then you don't really know basketball. There's a lot that we can learn from each other. Our bodies do different things. Our cues are different. I like all basketball, you know, so I can go and take some appreciating from watching Harlem Globetrotters. Are they traveling the entire time? Yes, this, that, and the other, but it's still an art, you know, in a form of it. Um, so that's why I think women's basketball is so beautiful because we're not going with it trying to be art. It's a sports, just like it is, you know, um, just like it is for you guys. I read a, um, a quote earlier from Candace Parker, and she was saying about how the haters, basically people that the men that usually hate, Eight on women's basketball usually aren't basketball players is the ones that you know don't even play anyways you know so they're like okay I'll just see you at LA Fitness you know if that's where you want to take it but there is a lot of respect when you go in there I get you know I like to go to the gym and play there I like to go and play you know in in a co-ed games and this that and the other so I was cultured before I went over there what I learned from just my experience playing at TCU and um there was always like a co-ed, like if we, there was a women's team, there's a boys team, you know, or a men's team if there's this. So I, my my favorite year is whenever, like we were included, whenever there is a men's team, because you can practice, you can watch, you can see things, you can compare, and there's respect. You know, my experience personally, I've always been around athletes, so I've always liked to hear the, the, the take from the guys, even if it is a boring game sometimes. I'm like, because I can say that about the men's games too sometimes, I'm like, that was sloppy all y'all want to do is dunk and play above the rim like make the extra pass like why jelly and miss when you you know so I get frustrated watching them so it's fair when that's returned I try not to be so defensive you know but it's for those that have so much to say I'm like I'm so happy I have not enough time to even hear it you know I like this day's all uh, it all has to be about support but my personal experience it wasn't so much guys first you know the girls I got a lot of respect you know, because I was able to be around athletes like y'all have brother, you know, that'll call me and watch every one of my games, you know, when he when he could and was like, man, you need to do this. You need it. You know, it was the culture of, from a young age. So maybe it helped me like being underneath my brother a couple of years and just following his footsteps on until we retire at the same year. You know, I think that was helpful. Got you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, it was just when I actually I admit I was a little bit ignorant to it as far as when I came over to U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I wouldn't say I consider like lower level. I just like okay, like this. You know, there's big difference in my opinion. Then I saw actually I stepped on the floor and like I saw Marisa Coleman work out. She mm -hmm. was uh, great shooter uh, from Maryland, She's right? Maryland. Yeah, she went. She went to Maryland, but I mean, I saw her work out. It was like my tenth grade. As soon as I got in the gym, uh, we were stacked. You know, like. Our, oh, our, our boys team was like Nolan Smith, yeah. Dr. Cunningham, Chris Wright. Uh, you know, th those are three guys that were just like freshmen and sophomores. And I think Dante was a junior. Right. So Marissa, Marissa was a junior, I think, at that point. And she was just playing. Right. Like, I just took a step back. I was like, dang. Yeah, it's just basketball. That, that's cool. Different basketball over here, right? Mm -hmm. So that's when it kind of hit me. I was like, I, I was watching her. I was like, man, it's like, it's a lot of fun to watch. It's like, right. wait a second. You know, it's just different. And, uh, you know, that's when I, I realized it's like, and I mean, I'm talking like my mother was a basketball player, you know, my aunt was a basketball <laughs> player, but I just saw a, a huge difference level wise. And then I came right. to the US and I feel like the, the gap wasn't that big, you know, especially in high school. And uh, then I started watching more and more. And then uh, especially when I got overseas, you know, I started watching a lot of uh, uh, college basketball. Right. Uh, some of the great UConn teams. And I was like, this is fun. I was right. like, the ball, and you see Maya Moore just you can do a lot of everything. Yeah. I was like, oh, you can't do anything but that. respect it, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me watch this. <laughs> Man, I played uh, – when I was playing in Spain, I think in 2014, they had um, – I was playing against Maya Moore, but they had a stacked team in Ross Casares and um, 
I'm telling you, she backed me down into the post, obviously a mismatch, no matter where we're at on the floor. But I'm not, I'll say that now that I'm retired, but at the time, I'm just like, oh, you know, doing my thing. And it was the quickest, even when I played with men, my entire, you know, like life playing with God, the respect I had for her, even from woman to woman, I'm like, how can you be a man and not respect that? Like she juked me with the right shoulder at turn and at the MJ faded and just, it was so easy. It was just two points, eight footer. But the whole time I was like, dun, dun, dun. like, how does she do that? You know, and that's just study muscle memory, this, that, and the other. And then just, she worked so hard, you know, as far as the work you put into it, that alone has got to be respectful, you know, like she's always of us, you know, we work so hard to go overseas, the discipline, the diet, you know, and all of that. And so when you see it just come in full action, I'm like, man, you got my support. But when you say names like Maya, Marissa and stuff, play, players that I've played against, and I'm, I just, I'm happy to hear you say it because I feel you. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're some tough girls. What was yeah. your, uh, what was your favorite league? So not, not um, about country as far as living in, just say, favorite league, street basketball. Yeah, league, I would have to say, um, that year in particular is the year that challenged me the most, but I was just, it was just a well-rounded, good, good uh, season. I think we finished maybe like fifth or sixth, you know, and I've gone to the finals, this, that, and the other, but what I've taken the most of, I'm playing with in a league, I think we had three or four, we have about three, um, your three or four Euro league teams in there. You had two Euro cup teams, you know, and not only that, all the other teams were just solid. So every night you're playing a great game. The referees, which you don't hear often, were actually taking pride and trying to keep it fair. At least it seemed like it because I could speak Spanish a bit. So I, I could kind of hear a little bit, but we'll save that for another podcast. <laughs> but you're it was saying that now. I don't know if I would ask you doing that season. It was, they're going to go back, find some clips, like, well, what was this? <laughs> but it was like, you, you know, it was great food, great cities. Um, we were getting paid on time. We were getting paid on time. We were getting paid on time. So that's like, oh, me. you touched the road. You know, like, I just love it here. <laughs> that's you know, something right like there. It's getting paid on time. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> and then an, another thing, too, with having that many, like, high caliber teams, you have high and high caliber and quality professionals. So when you're going to the gym, it's not you're not oddball out. You're not having to work so hard. It's just a culture, you know. You speak to the other to the other foreigners. You speak to the to the domestic people. It was just very professional. So I appreciated that. Sometimes when you go to other leagues that are still developing and really that are have that culture, it's hard to adjust to, you know. So you're constantly for me being overseas and not being European or you know or one of those descents. It's like it's hard because you're constantly dealing with language barriers, cultural barriers, uh, all kind of different beliefs, all kind of different backgrounds, all kind of different egos. It's just a lot and pot. But then it really does prepare you, you know, for like when you when you're done with basketball, it's prepared me because I'm like, I sat in locker rooms that have this made like this is not even an argument. This is cute. <laughs> like this is cute, you know? Yeah. yeah. But I would say Spain. I would have to say I would have to say Spain from the like well-rounded as far as good basketball, good food, professional, um, playing, you know, body was taken care of. We can get access. They had resources. You need training. You, I mean, uh, you need treatment. You need a massage. It was just all right there. So that's that was the top for me. Yeah, which, is, which is crazy. Like all the stuff that you mentioned should be, and I feel like. It's, yeah, it should be a crazy It's normal, game. right? It's like it should be the yeah. norm everywhere. And. Even on the men's team, actually, they, like in Europe, mm -hmm. you, you might not find some of that stuff. So, and getting paid on time, we're not even going to go there. Okay? Yeah, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> Man, they're wrong for their stuff. We need like a, a week to just talk about that. Uh -huh. but, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I can't really complain right now because I'm done. But my gosh, like, <laughs> it, it was, yeah. People I don't mean, even like, know. And I, I depend a lot of us, huh? Talk about stress, right? Man, it's funny looking back, but at the time I'm like, like I had, I played for a team. I was in Poland, and I, and I don't mind. It was literally they will do petty things like you have in your contract that'll say. And I played on five different teams there, so you could have to guess which one I'm talking about. But but the 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 manager would literally come in and tell you like if you don't do this I'm not paying you you know I was like that wasn't in the contract it is the first of the month or the 15th like it does not say I gotta have 25 points and we gotta win this game and I have to smile you know it just literally do your job and that's it you know sometimes you fall short that's the game you know but that was when it 
became hard because you give your all. Sometimes it may not be your best game. It may not be your team's best game. Sometimes it might be your best game and the team did bad, you know, but whatever the case, you can't hang somebody, you know, with someone signed for over your head, but it became normal. And I was like, man, that's just as weird as trying to get nor- used to wearing a mask everywhere you go, you know? It's just it's like, not it's people's livelihood too, and like the families too, and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. what frustrates me the most is like, right? Um, I was like, why? It's like, why do you do? Yeah. It? Like, just, I don't know. I, I, it's important to say that though, because you got to. It makes them. It makes me respect. Like, take myself out. Respect players even more because people really don't know, understand like what you go through mentally, spiritually, you know, physically and stuff. And so a lot of times I would go overseas, but then I would go back home and I'm from a small town and and sadly, but so, but sometimes even with myself, sometimes when you're from a small town, you can, you can develop a small mind. So I'm trying to go back and all they see is, oh, you're traveling the world and this, that, and the other. And I'm like, yep. You know, and I'm like, gosh, get out of my face. If you understand, like, you would not be talking mess. You would not be assuming. You would not be having a handout. You would, you know, it's, and so to look back and to be like, man, you kept doing it. You kept doing it. It, it says a lot for anyone that does it. But a lot of times, too, I'll say, I'm going to go overseas. Hook me up with an agent. I'll try, especially if I believe in you. It's the least I can do. It's just like, you never know. I'll try. But let me tell you, it's not as easy as it may seem, you know, and, and I appreciate it if you knew that going in before you asked me. So you don't think what I'm doing is that easy too. like put some respect on it, you know. So absolutely. But I was talking yeah, to a few college coaches, you know, and it's like, oh, man, you know, when you uh, it's like, I oh, just keep playing, you know, because when you retire, you know, coaching is just uh, it's just 90 percent business, whatever. And it's not really 10 percent right. coaching. I'm like, guess what? If you go overseas, it's not just the hundred percent basketball either. No. That's the problem, you know. It's like, why do I got to call the gym? Why I got to call? Like, hey, my yep. wife's not working my apartment. Like, taking one week to get fixed. I'm like, why? Right. <laughs> you know, oh man. Stuff like that. That you just think yeah. like, okay, that should never happen to a professional team. And it's just, mm-hmm. uh, you know. But like you said, every country is different. So it is. Every basketball culture is different. Um, so, what was your favorite country, though? Um, you know what's so crazy? It's oddly the best time I had just because the energy was just so high level was in Beirut, Lebanon, you know? And before when my agent had hit me up and was like, I got an offer for you in Beirut. That was the last year, right? Huh? Yeah, that was my last season playing there. (laughs) And I was like, I was like, Beirut, Lebanon, and like now it's I, I was so ignorant to what goes on in Lebanon. I just see what we put on the news, you know, in the Middle East, this, that, and the other. And I was thinking like, what the hell did I do to you? Does no other team want me? And you know, and I was like, are they really going to pay me that? And I, you know, and I, so I reached out to, to some people that had played over there before and they were like, trust me, it's beautiful. You know, like just go. And I was, at the time I was only going to go for two weeks for like a tournament. And I went, and when I tell you, like, I just felt, but I didn't know what to pack. I was like, do women need to cover all the way up? What do we do? It was just freedom. And, and it sounds really bad because, yes, you do see the people that are covered up, you know, but then you, you know, but then you, they could be walking next to a Christian. I was comfortable walking. I met so many people. They all spoke English. Uh, everyone spoke English. They were well educated. They were sweet as can be. You know, once you kind of get used to just being overseas and seeing like the, the police officers w- with the big old, AK, you know, guns and wearing the military clothes and driving in trucks, but those are the main ones hugging you, waving, good game, like, and the whole time it was just energy high because every, they were just so genuine, you know. And so anytime you're just around that many genuine people, it doesn't matter what you're doing, you know, that are just supporting you. It's contagious. So when I left from there and I went back home, I was actually like just excited, you know, to bring that energy back and not knowing that it was my last season. So the fact that I just was there and not only that, I wasn't playing in the Lebanese League. We we're playing in the EWBL. So we were uh, in the Eastern European Women's League. So we were going to Russia. We were going to Latvia. We were going to Slovakia. I think we went to Turkey. So we were bouncing around, you know. And then the team was fun. It was a, it was a good a good way to end it. A good way to end it, but did that make it a little bit harder though? Because I feel like if you have a negative experience as the last one, it's kind of like, man, you know, like I'm done. But it was it. positive. It was positive. That's what I'm saying. So if you have a positive one, it's like, don't you want to come back? It makes it kind of like, Oh, no. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> it was like, 
if I had a negative, I would have to go back so that I could have a positive because I don't like to end anything on a bad note. So I was like, even if I didn't have like odds stacked to get me going through adversity with, you know, with everything with my mom, I, I was happy. Like I was 100% happy. So it's like the way that I am as far as like connecting the dots spiritually, you know, and just thanking God. I'm like, he knew what he was doing. And like, this was my last year. I played with him in a tournament four years ago. I had developed a friendship. I had a, I had a best friend on the team that, um, she was actually from seventh when she was in eighth grade, she moved to Midland, Texas. She was a Lebanese girl. And, um, and I was a freshman and she was a great basketball player. Long story short, she was a foreign exchange student. My friendly ass was the only one that wanted to talk to her, you know? So I was always like, you have an accent, come with me. And, you know, we became friends. She was my teammate full circle. She went on to play college ball and everything. And she was playing pro in Lebanon. She was my teammate. Um, Ida and not only that I had another friend on the team that I became very close with and we would visit each other and everything and uh, she was on the team and still like one of my best friends so it was cool to, to be there with them and then Brittany Denson was on the team also played with her in Cluj and two other times in Romania um, I had a couple of other friends you know we had like five or six Americans you know they had a men's team and then they had it was just everything like we were just enjoying ourselves you know it was cool that's awesome Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's just it's something I was guilty of, like you said, you know, when I first got my offer from Turkey, and it's like I've been rejecting Turkey for like four years now in a row. Right. And I was like, no, no don't even, no, don't. It's like, Turkey, but Turkey, no. I was like, don't talk to me about Turkey. You know, I just, right. I just didn't feel comfortable, and I was just ignorant I say that. Right. And then when I did sign Turkey, I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with Istanbul. Uh, yeah. The brand, the money side was terrible. Uh, their latest, the only money now, it was like, it's a whole mess. Is it, is, has but, Turkey gone down a bit since? Uh, when when I Turkey played, there was basically this. this well, that was the year after Cluj. I played there. It was like oh, sixth okay. this league in Europe okay. at that point after the ACB. Um, and it was just it was just a mess financially, but it was a great experience. Like you said, you know, you didn't know what to expect, right? I mean, just religious right. differences and just culture differences, and you kind of get used to it and kind of messing around, like going to the mall, my wife and the kids, and it's like. Oh man, I gotta walk through a security thing like at the airport, right? Yeah. And it happened one time, second time. Then I got used to it. And I was like, you know what? Actually, I feel safer at the mall. Hey. Right. You know, like, it's worse than the, so in the yeah, U.S. It's so like, funny it's to more hear you dangerous in the U.S. I'm like, I don't know. Like, can mm-hmm. security stuff like over here? Uh, so you kind of get used to it. And we, I mean, we you end up loving Istanbul, uh, even sitting in traffic for hours just to get downtown and stuff like that. But overall, it's just, uh, Basketball just opened so many doors, I think. Uh, yeah. Just culture wise, it helped me a lot. Um, you know, just and, yeah, you know, it's when, a great you, meet, when you meet them and yeah. you know how they can change your life. Right. Yeah. And it, for me, I like hearing you say that because obviously we all do, we all kind of do the same thing, but we all have different experiences. But then whenever you do say, like, it is a bit different going to a mall, going through security, as for me, just even being a black woman in Poland, you know, in 2000. And nine, I thought I was like a walking exhibit. I was like, why are all these people staring at me? I'd have anxiety everywhere that I went. And then like the more that I got used to it, by the fourth year I was in Poland, when I would see someone else black, I was staring at them too. Like, what are you doing doing here? Like in our country. So I get it. So then it changed my perspective having those things like it. Yeah, it is a a bit different, but embrace that difference because that's how you grow, you know? So then I would see people smiling I'd be like well if they're looking like I'm probably I met a 12 year old and I was the first black person they had saw in person like that is so crazy I used to be like have people ask to touch your skin at the time you're not you don't have social media as much you know at all actually I don't think Instagram was around so you're not thinking I gotta go to Instagram and be like someone has to touch my skin today you're just living through these things and literally talking and conversing about it you know so now when it comes you can show different sides like whether it's walking in the mall, whether whatever kind of difference it is for the people coming up, I've had to men- I've mentored um, some people that are going overseas, and I'm like, this is what it is, you know. They may not, but you know, and I try to ha- even the, what may be negative to try to look at it positive because in in the end, it is, you know, you're experiencing something. You're it's different, you know. It's very different. I'm absolutely, I've seen it awesome. firsthand. Like you said, even in Turkey, I've seen it, and it's just when you know. People get heated, fans get hit overseas. They might say stuff that, uh, you know, they might just regret later, honestly, or, 
and and like you said, you know, I've had teammates that dealt with that in the past, and it was just, I mean, it was, it yeah, was exactly. weird. It, it made me yeah. uncomfortable because I was like, it's like weird. I was like, well, why? Yeah. You know, you, you don't understand it. You know, that just, you know, it was, it was, yeah. uh, it was a bit crazy, and uh, especially when uh, we used to go to Russia all the time. You know, with the Estonian team, it was just. Uh, it was, it was different. That's all I was saying. What say. was Russia like for you when you went to Russia? Like, what was that experience as far? Because just for me, it was different. One, being a woman. Two, being, you know, uh, African-American and stuff. So what was it like for you? Because sometimes Russia can be a little hard, you know? It was, and it was never for me. I played very well mm-hmm. in the VTB League, and I never wanted to go back, honestly. And uh, yeah. I had the opportunities to go back. And actually, when I played, I played in Estonia, and I loved I loved right. Estonia. I loved everything about Estonia. It's like a northern country. Oh. It's... Uh, it was one of my best experiences. Uh, you know, the people that I met there, I'm still in touch with all the coaches. That's uh, good. You know, it's just, we just became friends, you know, and any time it was like, uh, I was coming off last last summer when Cluj uh, cut me, basically, you know, because I was sick the year before with hepatitis and they were not sure if I could come back from it and whatever. That's uh, a whole story, Vlad, that one. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. That'll be the story for my book too, but I'll yeah, say that's more. great. <laughs> so, the first person that reached out to me that summer when I got uh, bought out was actually my coach in, Esto- uh, in Estonia, who was in Russia at that point. He was in the actual, he was in the VTB, he was in the Russian league, which is kind of like the second league in Russia, I guess. You could mm-hmm. say that. And you know, he was the first one to jump. He was like, "Hey, you, you know, you," because when I, when I, when he got me. Uh, I was, it was my third year, and it was basically, I think, his rookie year. And we had, at that point, we had the best season in history for them in the VTB, you know, and he brought me off the bench, and then slowly I, I kind of just, uh, you know, I ended up playing. Started really, breaking out. Yeah, okay. really playing well in the VTB, and uh, him and I had a great relationship. So every time he actually had a chance, he kind of threw an offer at me, uh, mm-hmm. no matter what his odds were of, of, of signing me. But it was just a sign of respect, and that's the first thing he did. He was in uh he was in the Katerinburg, I think, and it was just, uh, hey, this is our situation, this is our money. Uh, you know, I know it's, it's not what you're looking for, but, uh, you know, if the door's always open for me and stuff like that. And uh, that was actually the close I've been yeah. to City Russia. Uh, right. Uh, just because I don't, I'm, I'm not a cold person as far as, yeah. I'm not talking about cold otherwise. Yeah, no, it's both. It's, just, it's, it's cold. Right. Yeah, it's just, yeah. uh, you know, this, it's not the same. Uh, probably that's why I love Turkey. You know, people were so open. They're mm-hmm. just uh, really friendly. And uh, to Russia, every time I've been there, it's like. Uh, right. It's, it's just. Uh, well, I, I feel the same exact way. You know? <laughs> the same exact way. I was in. The, I was there um, one time and actually in Kettenberg. And I, but I wasn't playing. I was just there. And I was walking through the grocery at this time. I was walking through the grocery store and I'm just like, okay, I was living in Vienna. This is normal. I know Carl has entered the building now. And then I go to aisle eight and he's like watching me get chips. And every, every time I grab something, uh, every time I grab something, blah, 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 you know, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, what the flip? Like, it was so uncomfortable. You know, it was very, very uncomfortable. And it's so rare and it's so new that you don't know rather to be offended. You don't know, rather, you know, you don't know how to take it. Until you keep having to take it, take it. I'm like, this is kind of messed up, guys. Like, <laughs> we got to get it together. Yeah, it's different. And, mm-hmm. uh, it's just different, yeah. The craziest part is, like, the Russian League fit me, fit my style of play. Uh, but I just never, I don't know, I was yeah. never inclined to go that way. Uh, I never got the career by, you know, just they were offering me the most money, let's go sign. So right. uh, I just want to do things different, do things my way. You know, I mean, just even the decision from the uh, Euroleague straight to Romania, it was like, I think it's unheard of. I think nobody else did it. And I was like, you know what? No. Right. No, I'm, I'm just doing it my own way. I'm doing it. Uh, uh, you know, and I felt that was the right time to do it, for example, that decision just because. Um, I wanted to prove that a Romanian can be the best player in the Romanian league. And mm-hmm. If I would have done it at the end of my career, like most guys do it, yeah, uh, then you're not, you know. That's a good perspective. It's hit or, it's hit or miss, you know. So mm-hmm. to me, the way I did it, I wanted to kind of give hope to, to some of the Romanian kids. It's like, I don't just go see out there five foreigners. 
it right. happened to me in France. You know, we were six foreigners, and I mean, I think our French players, because uh, we're on a smaller team, and I think our French players were playing maybe five, ten minutes each. Yeah. Uh, but again, you're talking about a small city right now. I'm just talking about a whole country culture wise, and uh, you know that that's that's the main reason actually why I wanted to do that and go at the time that I did. So that's why I avoided Russia too, just because I, really, I never felt that I wanted to go that way. I was like, okay, so I'll get more money. And I this respect that, like for me, I respect that you did it that way, and and the fact that it's your way because that's what helps you have a long, like a longer career when you can manage that stress. When you start doing what everybody else tells you to do, go here, you're tired. But when you're kind of like connecting the dots, you want them to connect and just letting your life flow and then having reason to it. Because even just being on the women's team your first year there, like it was so cool to watch to watch you guys play, and not only because. My brother had played in uh, Romania a couple of years, so I was already familiar with the league, you know? I was very familiar with the league, and so when I was watching you guys, I was like, man, this is high level, you know? Y'all are playing in, like, I think there was France. What league were y'all playing in with the French teams are coming in? Yeah, we played FIBA Euro Cup that year, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it was cool for me to see because I had never played on a women's team that had a men's team doing that, you know? So I got to see a lot of basketball through y'all, but also – look at the kids. I have a relationship with the same uh, kids and clues. The same ones were following you or following me. And I'm like, that is so cool for them to see that, you know? So it, it means a lot other times when other people don't get why you make it, you know, there are people that do understand, but those who don't doesn't matter, you know, like the mm -hmm. kids always get it. You get it. It was dope to see. I think y'all won everything that year. <laughs> yeah, we, did. we did. We got it triple. We got about everything. <laughs> Uh, we just missed that FIBA Europe Cup, and I wish I could do yeah. that. It just wasn't meant to be, right? Um, mm. So now let's go off the court. Uh, we talk basketball, and what are your next steps? Uh, and we talked a little bit about uh, your training business, but I know that's not your main thing or your main calling right now. Um, so what do you want to do now going forward? Okay. Uh Man, I just want to get like during this quarantine COVID time, it's kind of allowed me to back up and I went, went, went. The next thing you know, it, it's like, here comes and things are falling in line, you know, but things are happening so fast. But then now the things are like slowed down with COVID and, and I'm able, uh, things are happening slow or at a pace that I can keep up. I'm even more excited, you know, like um, I just got it. I found out two days ago that I got nominated to be on the TC uh, Letterman's um board and so i like it's going to be super exciting to be a board member with a big program and institute not on, not only while i represent like the athletes from 2000 to 2010 it's just the university in total you know and so a lot of the things that i'm trying to do is just understand like my culture more and, and so many different things about myself and then implement it in a good way bridge the gap of what's going on with you know with tcu still be affiliated with them they're my family but then also um with this philanthropy that i'm like philanthropy job that i have obviously with COVID, it's slowing down you know but once it gets up and going i'll be able to just basically get my hands on a lot of good stuff and so that encouraged me to just to be good and in a time like this where I'm still healing or I'm transitioning where I have business opportunities I got to make sure that my no's are just as important as my yeses I'm just trying to keep like one foot in front of the other uh extend grace to myself stop when I need to rest when I need to go when I feel like it regardless of what everyone else is saying you know so really just burying in on that and trying to like just basically stay solid and that's all we can do well sounds like doing pretty good pretty amazing stuff right there trying, trying. <laughs> how did your basketball career help mm -hmm. you or prepare you for life after um it gave me a lot of confidence you know but then what i realized is and i would say like to you and to myself what i realized is like it doesn't matter how much confidence basketball gives you if you're not surrounding yourself with people that are instilling confidence in you that when you're here, you know, that they don't pull you down to CI level when they're there, they actually pull you up to CI level. You see a lot of that shit. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I am so surprised I made it this far with not being more intentional with my relationships, more intentional with my energy, more, you know, giving myself more time and, and, it's just so that's the most important thing is just is learning that I, I think whatever I did last, whether it be basketball or whatever, anytime you learn that and you still got a lot of time to go. Now it's like you can create your team, you create your ecosystem, you create your friends, you know, you 
create the people you want to follow. You create, you know, like the time you want to discuss and talk or create it. So now it's like, now I learned how to orchestrate within a team and now I can create my own, you know, if that makes sense. Um, but it does help a lot. It, it helps you communicate, obviously, like you, you go in and you have to talk to a lot of different people. Now, uh, you know, I've went to school to learn Polish, you know, so I can communicate better in Poland. You, so I can just speak the survival language. So of course I can go over here. We both speak English. I know I've, I've played for some pretty tough coaches, so it doesn't bother me <laughs> what the heck you say, like, you know, and that helps a lot too, because then you can get to the basis of it and you're not just always sensitive but there are times where you have to be sensitive you know where where you play for certain people and, and they can be insensitive and I, I don't want to be that kind of leader you know I've been led a lot I've always had to represent and be someone else's star player represent someone else's team uh, or whatever the case but now it's my own team so it's like I don't want it to be like that I don't even want to be the coach you know I just want to be a part of it and I created this really beautiful culture doing a lot of great things and making connections so I can take a lot from that good and bad, you know, good and bad. And I often go back to it. I still hang out. There's a lot you can learn from the game. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's just the culture to me. That's the thing mm-hmm. that we, we kept talking about. And it's like, that's what taught me, you know, just because you meet people uh, that might not always have the same background, but you always find some to talk about and kind of just open up a discussion that, you know, you just, uh, it can op- open up, other doors for you as far as networking and to me that's what i found the easiest uh just in general every summer or whatever it was just the the how easy i can connect to people because of the situation that i've been put in the cultures that i've been put in or you know the stress that i've been put under by yeah. my coaches you know it's like some people are like oh you just go play basketball for two hours you're good i'm like no nah, i just got chewed up for two hours how you like that right I was like, there was nothing enjoy about my practice. I don't know about yours, but I was like, I just hated my last two hours. About yeah, yeah. the game I love, yeah, that one, I just hated. It. We're talking yeah. about practice, right? And I that's mean, what people need to know, you know, need to hear and know because it is so much beauty to it. But when you get these times to talk, like, and I have this opportunity, you can go to my Instagram and see me smiling throughout Europe for ten years. But here's some tea, you know. This is the truth. This is what's what's in there. I, I still encourage it, but. Everyone has different stories. So like to hear yours, to hear mine and just talk about it and see how they all kind of mirror each other. It doesn't matter how many is on this call. We talk about overseas, you know, they're all different experiences. Absolutely. And then when you and we all go back to total different lives. Like when we leave, you know, it's so crazy to me, but it's cool. Yeah, I know. It's like it just uh, it sounds like a school year over there and then you come back. Yeah. And like, all right. <laughs> uh-huh. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy. But Asian, yeah. I really want to thank you for your time. Yeah, no problem. Uh, uh, this has been great, and uh, you know, I think uh, when, like you said, your inclusion, I saw your following, and just how many little girls following around and following you guys' team, uh, and that was awesome. And uh, you know, I just wish you nothing but the, the best, and we'll we'll stay in touch for sure. All right, for sure, vlog. Stay safe. Uh, <laughs> all right, Adrian. All right, bye.